so I picked up one piece. I also picked up baseball uh, among basketball and football for my distributor. Uh, my distributor no longer requires a physical location. So we are actually not going to have a physical location anymore. We're going to do this pop up thing. I, we had a pretty successful event, uh, a trial run for friends and family. My store has always been for friends and family because um, instead of having a lot of customers, I just have like 40 customers on the regular. I send them an email. We're all in the same Facebook group together. We're all on the same email chain to uh, not email text message chain together. And then I send them a inventory. Hey, this collection came in. Um, this is what I bought it for. You know, I would like to, you know, a little bit of compensation for my time and the overhead. But yeah, go have at it. Let me know what part of this. And I split the collection into like different parts, right? And obviously, if you take everything, then the, the price is very similar to what I bought it at. And that's very similar to Card Kingdom. It's a, probably a little bit higher than Card Kingdom a lot of time. Again, depends on the collection. If it's like Beta Sarah Angels, yeah, I will pay way above Card Kingdom for that because that's something I want and for myself. Now, if it's something that I know my friends want, my friends are always gobbling up these collections because they're hoarders like me. Uh, they're doctors, they're lawyers like myself, uh, and they have basically a very large disposable income. So I will um, buy a collection and then I'll post the price of the pieces I want to sell at whatever cost I bought it at and maybe a tiny premium, like less than a percent. And then people would respond, hey, I want this, I want this, I want to take it all. So the more you take, the more priority it is. And then in 24 hours it closes and then I give it to, and I meet up with my friend who wants to buy it. And then, you know, it's a Zelle transaction um, and then done, boom, done. They get the collection, I get the money and then we do this over and over again. Uh, same with distribution. Um, I will say, hey, these are the pre-order prices. Let me know if you want any. And then people will put in pre-orders, right? And then I'll charge a tiny bit of money for convenience sake and then, you know, sell it for, you know, whatever that tiny bit, that tiny bit of money plus the cost would be. We have learned something very, uh, very interesting that there is no way to get magic cards lower than Amazon prices. There's no way to get that $72. So Amazon draft seems to be stuck at 72 a box. Now you might be like, oh, I checked today. It's not on sale. Yeah, you idiot, it's called a sale. Like I don't know how many times I have to make a video talking about how sales work. There's a holiday, you wait for the holiday, the cards go on sale, you buy on the sale. You're not gonna buy it day to day, right? That's not even how distribution works, right? Distribution, there's an order and it opens, then you put it in your order, then it closes, and then a month later you get the cards. I mean, I, I don't understand, this is the same idea, right? So, uh, we're carrying one piece. One piece is very interesting. You, you buy for three dollars, or two seventy-five, three dollars, three ten, and uh, these packs sell for a lot of money. I think they sell for like six or eight dollars online. So we were doing one piece and that's kind of the margin that your, my friends are looking for. They don't want to buy from me if they can just buy Amazon and it doesn't help me either. Cause again, I'm not making any profit, right? So it doesn't matter to me if you're overpaying for it. So the distributor, uh, distributor um, has, uh, let me give you the ratio. Let me just give you the straight up ratio so you guys can understand this better. Cause if I just give you up the numbers, the flat numbers, then you guys can get it. So we get Mosaic, that's baseball, that sells to $14.99. We get that in for $8. Um, online, so that is the MSRP is $14.99. That's what Target and Walmart would sell Mosaic baseball for, a cello pack. Online, they sell it for $10, unlike Dave and Adams. Well, my friend is like, hmm, you know, I, I can buy this off Dave and Adams, I can buy this off Walmart, but it's $8 here or $7.50 or something like that. Uh, baseball is slightly cheaper from Panini because it's not licensed, but whatever it is. And he's like, you know what? I'll just order a hundred of them. So in time, during many, many years and many, many orders, we save a lot of money from this distribution thing. But only if we're ordering stuff that is cheaper at distribution than it can be found anywhere else online. Then it makes sense to have a distributor. But if your distributor is a magic distributor, and let's say you can order a box for 
I'm actually doing the math right now. Nope, it's more than ninety dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's say ninety dollars. Ninety dollars and some change from your distributor. But that box is eventually on Amazon for sale, right? New Compena, Neon Dynasty. I think um, what's his name. Dominator Unite. I mean, there's always a new flashy set and then the older set becomes the $72 box set on sale during holidays. Well, 72, why would you buy something for 90 from a distributor when you can get from 72 Amazon ship to you? Now there are people who say, oh, Amazon is bad company and they um, abuse their employees and they're wearing adult, adult diapers, right? But at the same time, like, I don't want to sound callous, the price is the price, right? And it's not even more convenient. Amazon is the more convenient of the two is next day of delivery, right? So back to my analogy, again, I'm, I'm just going to say what I need to say. And then you guys can criticize, you guys can say things. Um, when you talk about something like Amazon, you talk about something like, uh, as a competitor, it just simply cannot be beat for magic cards. Everything else, they can be beat. Amazon prices for Pokemon cards are much higher than distribute, duh. Um, especially for loose at $2.10 for loose. I mean, this is fun to open. So here's kind of the, and then same thing, One Piece. Uh, One Piece has great margins and actually sells on the secondary market for over MSRP, even though it is not easy to find, but relative, it's still in every Walmart. I think it's in Targets too. So that's where we are. Uh, we are at a crossroad where it no longer makes sense to buy magic cards from the distributor and our distributor is okay with us just buying sports cards and One Piece and My Hero Academia. Uh, my friend really went in One Piece and I was very jealous, right? Because he actually made a lot of money from that game. Like a lot of money. He opened a lot and they have alt cards. And you know, I mean, they did it the Pokemon method, right? where you're just chasing these alt cards all the time. And so it's highly addicting because these art cards are, even though like the game is playable because you don't need the art card, you can just get the regular card, which is a lot cheaper. But like, if you want to bling out your deck, plus this is the first edition of One Piece. So there's a lot of added, it's kind of like when Digimon first came out, there's a lot of added value, if you will, in getting the first edition set. Now, will the set be reprinted? I don't know. Uh, I hope it will. It's Bandai, so it's not exactly that well known. They also do Digimon, so it's not exactly well known what the print run is and how much they printed and if they ever will reprint an older set, right? My point is magic is just unfeasible. It is unfeasible because there is no one who's going to pay $90 for a box they can get on sale for 72 that the math is very simply does not work. Um, now one piece, the math works right now. If the game gets more popular, can the math change? Yeah, math changes all the time on these products. Um, football is cheap now because the Super Bowl is over. Um, and even um, back to my idea about Pokemon, Crown Zenith is a different animal than like Fusion Strike. So your distribution costs will be different. Now, is this something that you can stomach? Is this something like each product skew? So not just Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, each product skew has a different level where you pay at. And if that level makes sense for me and my friends, we're gonna buy into it. If it doesn't make sense, we're not gonna buy into it. And I think for a long time, these stores have been forced to carry Magic, even though it was a losing proposition, with the idea that, hey, you will get customers and they'll buy hot dogs or Twinkies or Oreo cookies, right? The, the idea that, hey, you can have a community and it doesn't really matter if you make money from the box or not. Um, they'll buy singles there. You know, you, you understand what I'm saying. This idea only exists in magic. This idea does not exist for, because there's no like, there's not people hanging out at your store for eight hours a day just playing magic, right? Uh, for sports cards or Pokemon or any of that stuff, right? Pokemon is, if you have league, it's for little kids. And honestly, they're not even going to be able to play games for eight hours. They're going to get tired and go want to go home. Anyway, that is it. Let me know what you guys think in comments below. Am I right? Am I wrong? Hi guys.